Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Strength to Strength. Here at Strength to Strength, we try to provide content that is edifying and encouraging. And this morning, we have Brother Tony Zook from Minnesota. I'm not sure what part of Minnesota are you from, Tony? International Fall, pretty close to there. He's going to share on the joys, challenges, tears, and laughs of a dad with special children. And I guess this would fall under a testimony, and I find testimonies of the work of God in someone's life to be very encouraging and edifying. It's beautiful to see God's work in people's lives, and in the case of this morning, in the life of a family, uh, made me think of Psalms 127, verse 3, says, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but shall speak with their enemies in the gate. Before we get started, let's have a word of prayer. Holy Father in heaven, we praise your name this morning. We thank you for your hand of love and compassion on each one of us. We thank you for each one that's gathered here this morning. We pray that your um, overseeing eye of protection would be upon each one of us. Be with Brother Tony as he shares. Pray, Lord, that he would share freely of the work that you've done in their lives as a family. We just pray that this um, talk this morning could be a blessing to each one of us, that we would be encouraged in our faith. Just go with us, direct us, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Go ahead, Brother Tony, and God bless you as you share. Well, thank you, Sam. Good morning to everyone this morning. This call has been a real blessing to me. Uh, it's been a discipline to get up and sit here every morning. And uh, I've been a big promoter, and I have lots of friends who listen. But I have very few who get up and get on here in the morning. And I think that would be a, it, there's a, there's a different blessing to being on here than just listening to it later on the day as you're working. So I would encourage people to do that. So I'm from Loman, Minnesota. Uh, it's a little town way up northern Minnesota by Seb International Falls. And, uh, my screen up here. There we go. And uh, we have six children and we're part of a little a small church up here. Our youngest daughter is uh, has Down syndrome and uh, she's fairly high functioning. And uh, just to give you a little bit of a uh, anecdote on, on where she's at with, with that, um, she can't wait till she's 17 and can go work at Subway. That's just one of her goals in life that she wants to do that and, and get a cell phone. That's that's pretty big for her. And uh, marriage and Maranatha Bible School are also pretty big in her uh, things that she would like to do in life. Uh, earlier this summer, I was talking to another one of my daughters about uh, saving money for Bible school and, and working for the summer. And kind of, we had about a half hour session here. And when we was all done, Kendra comes in and she's standing here by the door with a piece of paper and she stutters a fair bit and she gets nervous. And so she was, she has her paper there in her hand and, and she's like, so, 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 so on fr 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 Fridays, I, I clean bathrooms and, and you give me dollars, she said. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, okay. And she says, and when, and when I get older, I'm going to teach school. And uh, her sister and brother both teach school. And so she wants to do that. And there's some things we just we just say, well, we'll let the Lord decide that. We don't know if you get married or not. But this one, I was like, we know you're not teaching school. And I was like, so I should tamp this down a little bit. And so I said, well, I well, I don't think you'll be teaching school. I just don't think that's what God will have. She sits her a little bit and she goes, ah, rats. Um, so that's that's her. Uh, yeah, she's fairly high functioning. Uh, we also did foster care for several years and. Uh, the last little girl we had, we adopted. She has significant uh, medical needs, um, daily procedures, 
and as well as social, emotional, behavioral. Um, we have lots of challenges with her. But most of my stuff today, I will focus on our oldest daughter. Um, I'd like to look at two sides of this. The first is accepting the child that God has given you. And the, and the second one is then how tips on how other people can relate to families that have special children in them and relating to people with special, special needs. So 14 years ago, we entered the world of special needs. Um, our lives were forever changed. It opened up new challenges, but also new opportunities. We became part of a new circle of friends. Uh, you meet new people that you didn't really notice before. And, and you're part of maybe a uh, education group or something in our community that we wouldn't have been part of before. Um, it's opened lots of doors for us. And I don't think of our daughter as defining our family as to who we are. Like, I don't think I'm, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think of a family as us as a family with a special need child, really. But I'm sure other people would feel that way as they looked at us, they looked at our family and, oh yeah, there's, there's Tony's family. Um, and for the most part, I think I can say we've accepted and embraced um, where God has, has put us here. When she just can't her, like we've talked before, would we want her to change? Um, would we want God to heal her at that? And I don't know. She's Kendra. We love Kendra the way she is. Um, when she was born, it felt like we were entering a new world. Like we were, yeah, it was, a, it was a new world. And I felt like the world was forever changed. And it was. Um, it, is, it is completely different. But on the other hand, we're still, we're still normal. And uh, there's a, a mother with a special needs son. She wrote that one time she looks at her son and thinks, oh, he looks like someone who has Down syndrome. And then she's like, oh, yeah, he does have Down syndrome. Um, but we don't really think of our daughter in that way. We just, it's just, she's just Kendra. And we have a, we have a blast. We have all kinds of fun. With her. She is, she's just a ball of fun. She's fun to pick on. Um, sometimes, though, we, we think about where life could have been, or I think about, it's, it's to think of the pain though of that she'll never be normal. And like to think that she can't think these things through or that she'll never be able to, to be married or um, those are those, yeah, those are real things. We were at a homeschool convention a few years ago in uh, Manitoba. It was a large group and I didn't really know any people there, very few. Um, and there was an art class for the children for the day. And there was a course, um, the course that the children participated in. And, and that day, my wife saw Kendra through the eyes of a stranger. We always are in, in groups of friends and that everybody knows Kendra. And this time, my wife saw her through the eyes of a stranger. And, and Kendra was up there singing that day with the group, all the other children her age. And she's kind of hitching up her dress and looking around and gawking everywhere else and except doing what she's supposed to be doing. And, and my wife, just she just saw her in a different light. And at the end of the day, my wife went to pick up her, her, her piece of art that she had in her art class. And uh, they were supposed to draw a wolf uh, howling or something like that. And then Martha's like, well, how in the world am I going to find her piece of art in a, in a stack of 40 pieces of 40 paintings. Like, how am I going to know which one was hers? And she's looking and all of a sudden she saw it. And she's like, oh, yeah, that, that's Kendra's. And, and it just broke her heart. She's like, couldn't have someone like given her a little pointer or, or showed her some other colors besides spears of blacks and grays. Um, and when we left her that day, Martha was in tears. She shared you know, kind of her journey of that day. Several weeks later, though, I found that picture hanging in our bedroom. And uh, it still hangs there today. And it's more of a testimony of where Martha's heart is than where, than the, than the benefit of the art. We'll put it that way. Um, I, I said recently, I don't consider us to be burdened with, with our children. Um, but as I was reflecting on it, in reality, my wife is. Uh, whenever I get a harebrained idea, I was talking to Hoover about a funeral this weekend, and oh, we should, we really should go. And then my wife's 
brain starts spinning and she starts thinking about diabetes control and behavior control and lack of structure and, and how do we drag all these medical supplies along and, and it, she, she has a full-time job and uh, at times, yeah, at times we are burdened. Um, uh, maybe more often, <laughs> maybe more often than just times. Uh, we definitely have gray hairs. Several months after Kendra was born, I was assigned a topic at a Bible conference on John 14. And John 14 says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. And as I was thinking on that verse, the, the thing that stood out to me in that verse was that you believe in God. Like that is what makes our heart is not troubled. And one of the points that I had was that, was that I believe in the God of Job. And, and the reason that is special to me is because I have a God who knows everything about me. He knows my strengths. He knows my weaknesses. And yet he still allows me to go through trials. And he knows how much I can handle. And that is a benefit. Imagine if you didn't know that and that your, your world is just going bad. Um, but I know that I have a God who knows me. I know I, know I have a God who cares for me. And will only allow so much. He, he puts his hand up and he stops Satan. And, and that is just a tremendous blessing to me. And, and as I, as I, after Kendra was born, I, we thought we did, I felt like Job. I thought I had life. I had accepted what God had given us that uh, first morning. We, after we heard it, I, I accepted that. And, and this is, this is okay. It could be worse. Um, and then about six weeks later, we had heart surgery and, and that felt like blow number two. And, but it was, but God is in control. And there's a song we refer to, um, they came very special to us during this time. And we, we call it Kendra's song and she's getting old enough now that I have to be a little careful when I talk about what she's around, because she doesn't like me to talk about her and tell her story. Um, but Ron Hamilton wrote a song after he had eye cancer and and you might if you're into kids stories he's catch the pirate and he wrote this this song called rejoice in the lord and it's become very special to our family god never moves without purpose or plan when trying his servant and molding a man give thanks to the lord though your testing seems long in darkness he giveth a song Second verse is, I could not see through the shadows ahead, so I looked at the cross of my Savior and said, I bowed to the will of the Master that day, then peace came, and tears fled away. Now I can see testing comes from above. God strengthens his children and purges in love. My Father knows best, and I trust in his care. Through purging, more fruit I will bear. And then the, the chorus is, O rejoice in the Lord, he makes no mistake. He knoweth the end of each path that I take. For when I am tried and purified, I shall come forth as gold. And as, I, as we think of Kendra, she is not a, a mistake. Um, God, God made her and God placed her in our, our family. That's actually from Job there, I believe. Um, he knoweth the end of each path that I take. I was, I was at a friend's church for meetings one time. And on Sunday afternoon, I was sitting in the living room there visiting with them. And my, my friend says, Tony, how can you handle having this child with special needs? Like, how, how do you mentally accept this? Or, or where, how do, you, how do you do that? He doesn't know if he could do that. And I was like, brother, you're the one who's four-year-old died from cancer. And every letter you used to sign off with, still finding grace for the moment. I said, like, don't, you don't get this. And, and he, well, he had grace for what he went through. And God gives us grace for what we went through. And he was saying they had a family in their church who really struggled with accepting their, their child. And, and I, I just launched. I, I, I got all fired up. And I said, man, if I didn't have an assigned subject tonight, I would be talking about, or oh, rejoice in the Lord. He makes no mistake. And, and I had to put in a little pre-sermon talk for that just to encourage that because we can, it is discouraging. It is lots of work. Uh, Kendra's pretty, pretty easy to take care of. Um, actually, our, our little girl we adopted is, is much more 
causes much more anguish. Um, but special needs children have a place. I just, yeah, I just, if I see one and see a child in town, especially some of the Down syndrome, I, I, I got to go be over there and, and talk to them. I say I do not feel sorry for people with special needs children. I empathize with them and I understand their, I understand their trouble, trouble, but I do not feel sorry for them. So if you're blessed with, if you're blessed with a special child, take heart. Um, God knows and God allowed that child. People say that, oh, you must have a special family. That's why God gave you a special child. Uh, no, no, we're just normal people and God changed, changed us, but he did not. We weren't special. I've been very blessed with the way our children have been accepted. Um, we've never had any any bad comments or um, I've had some insensitive comments one time. One time I had a rather uh, uppity society guy, I guess, in our community here. I was talking to him and he was like, ah, oh, his sisters are just, they're scatterbrains. He said, about like your daughter. Um, that's the closest thing I got to a slam. And I, I, I didn't take it personal, but it, I, I felt it. Um, but for the most part, people are very helpful. And our society has done a lot to, to um, help children in the last 50, 60 years. Before then, it was, it was not near as accepting. Um, you know, Hitler annihilated children with special needs. Poor countries just put them in orphanages. And, you know, the United States 60 years ago wasn't a whole lot different. Um, now we have, we have, it's almost cool to stand up for these children. Uh, there's, a, there's a story of a, there's multiple stories actually, but one of, of a, a boy who was a, the water boy for the local football team in high school. And he was there for every practice, every, every game. He was always there, always faithfully did his part. And in his senior year, his coach, put him in pads for the week and made a deal with the, with the opposing team and let him run for a touchdown. And the whole community cheered him on. And I always get tears when I read the story, but that's, that's kind of where we are today with, with um, children with Down syndrome. They're much more accepted than, than they used to be. There's much, there's uh, statistically, there's more children with, um, with uh, special need or with Down syndrome living than there ever has. Um, also statistically, and that's because of medical thing. Also statistically, there's more um, there's more children. There's fewer being born than there ever have because of abortion. And uh, just for interest's sake, last week I read a story of a lady in in Britain with Down syndrome. She's 23 years old. She's married, and she's suing the British government because they allow abortions of children with Down syndrome. And she's, and that's discriminating against me. And uh, so yeah, there are some children who are, are very high functioning. So how do we relate to people with, with special needs? What, so if you see a child with special needs or, or a family and, and you, how do you relate to them? How, what do you do for them? Um, do we look at them sideways after the corner of our eye and watch all the strange things they do? Because we do strange things. There's no doubt about that. Uh, or how do you accept them? How do you how do you encourage them? The first thing that a, a special needs family needs is encouragement. And as I was writing this, I remembered many things. My, my sister took care of a little boy named Ben, and I'll mention his mom later. Um, and Ben had cerebral palsy, was in a, a wheelchair, could only communicate with his eyes. He could look at you for yes and look away for no. That's the only way he could communicate. He, his mind fully functioned, um, but he could not could not communicate in any way. And he would scream if he couldn't communicate well. And my my, my sister really struggled with caring for him at first, and then she then she learned to love Ben. And yeah, she she was married and and uh, in Pennsylvania when Ben passed away, and she flew back to Minneapolis uh, to be with his family, and they couldn't wait for her to get there. Anyhow, so that's that's Heidi's background, and she's the first morning, the first person we told that morning. It was the middle of the night. And she was, I knew she was up, and so I called her and I said, "We have a little girl," and she's like, "Oh, good." And I said, "And she's special." And the first thing that 
Heidi said was she, she was crying and she said, Oh, I'm so happy for you. Uh, that, that just, that just blessed us. Another lady, another girl, she was 21 and her, she had a sister with Down syndrome. And when she came in that morning to the hospital to visit us, she said, your family will change. Um, it's going to affect your, the way your family looks at life. And that is, that is true. We got lots of letters. We got letters from people we had. We had no idea who they were. Um, we still get Christmas letters and, and pictures and so on that we have on our board uh, of people that have children with Down syndrome. If Martha knows of someone who was born, she's going to send them a letter. Now, I mentioned uh, my sister Heidi took care of Ben. And so the, the morning after Kendra was born, I saw Ben's mom. I saw his special, his, his uh, transportation van at the hospital. So I went looking for Ben and we were friends with Ben and of his family. They were not Christian people. And uh, I went looking for, for Melissa that morning and I found Melissa and Ben down therapy. And so I told her, I said, well, we had a little girl last night and, and uh, she has Down syndrome. And now you, you understand this, this lady has a, a child who takes 24 seven care um, their life is very difficult for them. And I said, we have a special little girl and she just about jumped up and down for joy. Um, she just got all excited. And that just, that when you're, when you're a new dad and you're, you're just kind of struggling with this, that, that just did wonders. And there's a, there's a poem called Welcome to Holland. And uh, many of you may have read it already. And I just read that. Two days before Kendra was born, I read it in the Midwest Focus. So after Kendra was born, I I read it to Martha, or I just related it to Martha. And uh, I related this also to Ben's mom. I said, there's this poem called Welcome to Holland. And she said, oh, yes. She says, I have that. And it's framed and it's hanging over Ben's bed. And that afternoon, she came into the hospital and she gave my wife um, this framed poem uh, from Ben's, from over Ben's bed. And we said, oh, no, that's yours. No, she says, I can get another one. You can have this one. And we still have that, that framed in our bedroom today. Welcome to Holland. Um, this lady, was a, she had a child with Down syndrome. She says, I am often asked to describe the experience of raising a child with a disability to try to help people who have not shared that unique experience to understand it, to imagine how it would feel. Well, it's like this. When you're going to have a baby, it's like planning a fabulous vacation trip to Italy. You buy a bunch of guidebooks and you make your wonderful plans. The Colosseum, the Michelangelo David, the gondolas of Venice. You may learn some handy phrases in Italian. It's all very exciting. After months of eager anticipation, the day finally arrives. You pack your bags and off you go. Several hours later, the plan lands, the plane lands, and the stewardess comes in and says, welcome to Holland. Holland, you say, what do you mean, Holland? I signed up for Italy. I'm supposed to be in Italy. All my life, I dreamed of going to Italy. But there's been a change in the flight plan. They've landed in Holland. There you must stay. The important thing is that they haven't taken you to a horrible, disgusting, filthy place full of pestilence, famine, and disease. It's just a different place. So you must go out and buy new guidebooks and you must learn a whole new language and you'll meet a whole new group of people you have never met before. It's just a different place. It's slower paced in Italy. It's less flashy than Italy. But after you've been there a while and you catch your breath and you look around and you begin to notice that Holland has windmills and Holland has tulips. Holland even has Rembrandt. But everyone you know is busy coming and going from Italy and they're all bragging about what a wonderful time they had there. And for the rest of your life, you will say yes, that's where I was supposed to go. That's what I had planned. And the pain of that will never, ever, ever go away because the loss of that dream is a very significant loss. But if you spend your life mourning the fact you didn't get to Italy, you may never be free to enjoy the very special, the very lovely things about Holland. And that, that still is in our bedroom today, um, along with her artwork. And, and I believe there's a few things there that she has for better artwork as well. Um, so that was encouraging to us. I have a friend in Pennsylvania, his son was born with Down syndrome, and he was all 
discouraged about it and, and he said he went the next day to a to a uh, he took care of yards and he went to someone's house the next day and he said there's an Amish couple there and they had a, a daughter with Down syndrome he said who was overweight and slovenly and, and was was not a was not well kept and you know yeah and uh, so he got there and the guy meets him and says, Hi, how are you today? And he's like, Well, I'm fine. I just had a we just had a little boy with Down syndrome. And he said, the guy says, Mama, come, Down syndrome. And just got all excited about Dave's little boy. And Dave says, Well, if he can get excited about it, I can too. And so encouragement is just is just huge. Uh, it's not the end of the world. Uh, sure, it, it changes your world. It'll, it'll never be the same again. Um, but it is it is not the end of the world. Um, life still goes on. Life is still life is still good. Encouragement has been has been huge, and not and not words that you can't fix it, um, but words of encouragement in the midst of in the midst of what we're we're facing. The second thing a special family needs is space. Um, when you first get your diagnosis, you you feel like a cistern that's just, you, you just, you don't know. And you, you just have all this information that you, that pours in <laughs> and they give you all these pamphlets. And, you know, a, a child with Down syndrome, need to have their kidneys checked, need to have their eyes checked and their ears checked and their thyroid checked. Oh, they need to do this every year. And they're, and it's just like on and on and on. And, and it's like, if I don't do that with my other children, um, why, you know, and, and so, you, you gotta, so where do we go? How do we do this? How, what, what do we do? I said, it's kind of like cancer. Um, when you get cancer, everyone you meet knows somebody that did something that did or did not work and that you should or should not do this thing. And they have all this advice and, and that can be overwhelming. And, and we're, we're open to ideas. I mean, we never did this before. We, we don't know what we're doing. Um, but we get lots of ideas and lots of ideas that contradict. And so you got to give a, a family with, with special needs some space uh, that they space to, to do what they can do or what they, what they need to do decisions that work for us. So when Kendra was first born, I said, well, I guess we'll have to send her to public school because we certainly don't know how to teach a child with special needs, you know, and, so with that, well, maybe we'll have to send her to school, um, and lots of lots of families do. And so we had a trip one summer shortly after she was born, and we kind of dubbed it our Down Syndrome trip. It seemed everywhere we stopped, we kept running into people with children with Down Syndrome and friends. And uh, there was one little girl we we met, and uh, we we came to their house, and we had never met her before. She her mom was a good friend of mine, my, my wife. And uh, when we got out of the car, uh, Destiny says, started naming us, Tony, Marfa, Kevin, and she went right down the list and named all of the children. She'd never met us before. She'd just seen our picture. She was five years old. And I said, if I ever have a child, if my child turns out like her, I will have hit a home run. And, and she was homeschooled. And it's like, wow. And, and of all the children we met on the trip, she was the highest functioning, and, and she was homeschooled. And I can't say that that's why, but but that, there was a correlation there that we noted. And uh, so we ended up, we, we homeschooled. Um, Destiny is, is way excelled where Kendra is. Uh, she plays piano, and she quizzes, and she, she runs the cash register for the farmer's market. Uh, she's she does very well. Um, so our yeah, so so some people do that. Um, my mom had a cousin. Of course, this would have been back in the sixties, maybe. And when he was born, when he turned five years old, he was placed in an institution. And we can say, oh, how terrible! And and I'm sure it was five years old, and and they just there he went. But his brother commented that he figured out that his parents had put on a million miles, I think it was, because every Friday night they would go pick him up and bring him home for the weekend. Sunday night they would take him back home, back to the institution again. And, and Dougie lived there for his whole life. 
So he was in his 50s, I believe, when he passed away. And after his parents had passed away, like this was his home. This was his life. Um, and so he had a home. He had friends. He had a job. And and his his brother, Dougie's brother, did not see this necessarily as a bad thing that he was put in this institution. Um, so that can happen. Um, some people do therapy. We, one of my one of our acquaintances we know they did therapy five days a week. Lots of therapists. Like you have this child and you don't know what their potential is, and the only way you'll find out is by is by trying. And so you've got to push as hard as you can, as long as you can, and because maybe they can learn how to do this. So you want to try. But but how much and how far? And so she had therapists in her five days a week. And you know what? After Kendra was three years old, we we stopped therapy. It was just more disruptive to our family than, than was beneficial. So we have give give space. Um, we're currently looking with our, our youngest daughter, um, who we've adopted. We've been having lots of behavioral issues and um, I'm learning a whole a whole nother set of needs. And uh, and going against all my all my uh, things I've thought, whatever, uh, we are actually have her, we're having a meeting next week with the local counseling center and looking at diagnosis. We have ADHD as our medication. Um, and I told my wife, you know what? I said, we're going to get shot for that. Some people aren't going to get that. And they're going to say, oh, you shouldn't do that. You should pray or you should whatever. And then there's other people you talk to that are in these, um, one Mom said her boys begged to get back on their medication because they just they just couldn't function. They couldn't obey when they didn't have their medication. And so I said, you know what? Um, some people are going to get this and some people aren't. And, and just give space to families with special needs with where they're at. My my cousin says these children don't come with a man. Uh, you have to you have to figure it out. And that's and that's true. They're. Actually, in there, uh, my cousin they used uh, they used uh, medical marijuana for a while, which was very which was very helpful. Um, so yeah, it gives pe people space to learn to try and then to try something else. Be understanding. Um, we know we have a special child. Um, that's that's quite obvious to us. And uh, we know they do strange things. And uh, for the most part, we're okay with that. Uh, they embarrass us, and, and for the most part, we, we, we're okay with that. I went to teach at Maranatha Bible School, and it was the first time I was there, I was a, a nervous wreck. I'm trying to fill my spot as a teacher. And, and we actually had kind of some stomach issues when we got there, and we were afraid we were dragging the flu in, and, and we, you know, I was a nervous wreck. Um, that's a whole other story. And uh, so Kendra's five years old, and we're standing there before food, before supper one night. And there's a and Kendra's pretty short, and there was a, a table there with with the pie on it. So there was the, the normal food line where you went through, and then they had another table beside it with with full of pies. And Kendra was just about right this level, right head level for the pies. And the cooks pointed out that Kendra was walking down the, the table there with the pies and she was licking each, the whipped cream off of each pie as she went by it. Um, and, and my wife was just mortified. You know, we're just, we're just, oh, uh, you know what? And, and nobody, like, nobody switched the pies out. Nobody, they just, we, they just took it and went with it, you know? Uh, we, we need moments like that. We need people to be able to just accept who we are, um, see that we're embarrassed, and, and you know, it's just, it's just fine. Um, I don't know how many of you have 14-year-old daughters. You have to work on getting them to keep their dress down. You know, it's just a, Kendra, pull your dress down. You know, and, oh, oh, yeah, get your dress up. I, we've been teaching her that since she was little, and we continue to teach that, you know. Um, but it's just it's just the way life is. Most people sneeze and know that you should uh, you know cover your mouth, and she she does. But if if we would sneeze and have some bad after effects, we'd be all like all embarrassed. And she's not embarrassed. She just knows she needs 
wipe her face, you know? And, and so, yeah, be understanding of, of the people that we have, the children we have. Accept and befriend them. Uh, this is, you know, Kendra loves people and friends just like everyone else. Uh, she, she, the people who are her friends are just, uh, they, they're her friends. She really, really has people she enjoys. Um, they're her heroes. There's a girl from our church who, she doesn't live here anymore. She, she moved away to teach school. But when she comes home, my Kendra's across the church parking lot, 90 miles an hour to go, to go over and give Jolene a hug. Because Jolene's her friend. Uh, one of the ladies in our church, uh, she has arthritis and kind of sits in her, we have a, an easy chair for her in the back of church to sit on. And she she took a purse and filled it with special toys and whatever. And after church, Kendra could go back and and play with this purse. And that was Miriam's way of, of befriending Kendra. And that was, that was always a big deal for her. Um, Kendra's friends stack pretty high with her parents as well. If you, if you take care of daughters of our child, um, that that's pretty important to us as well. I think all of us um, want to reach out to people like this. Um, we, we all desire to. That, that's, that's, but we just don't know how to do it. And even, even me, if I go into a, you know, I was in Cabela's one time and here was a family with a, little baby with Down syndrome. My, I just peeking around the aisles trying to figure out how to make contact, how to talk to him. So I, you know, I kind of introduced myself and I looked at me like I was kind of, kind of strange wacko, you know, but uh, how, how do we do that? And we want to do it tactfully, but, and, and encourage people. And sometimes we just don't know how to, how to do that. But I encourage you to just be a real friend. I ask, uh, I asked my wife and some friends of ours, how do we wish people would, what do we wish they would do in relating to our children? Like, what are some things that we wish they would do? Um, the first thing was was to just treat them normal. You know, Kendra can, or Kendra can carry on a conversation. Um, you just have to be patient. And sometimes she doesn't get all the details quite right. Sometimes she stutters. Uh, but just, just be patient. We had a diabetes appointment in Duluth here a couple of weeks ago, well, three hours away. And the, the child, the child care worker came in and was asking Kendra questions. So how was your summer? And, and the conversation is not with the parents, it was with Kendra. And so what, you know, well, she's my brother got married this summer. And Kevin got married and Krista works at Hardy's and, and uh, I like going swimming at my aunt's house. And there was a skunk at my aunt's garage. And they just had this whole conversation going. Um, it was a it was a normal conversation between two adults, and the parents weren't involved with it. Uh, so just treat her normal, and that's actually the best advice we got was to treat her normal. Um, she can learn anything theoretically; it just takes longer. And uh, so just treat them normal. They need they can learn how to be potty trained. It just took her to six years old. Um, you can learn how to do this. It just takes longer. Um, it also takes longer for discipline. <laughs> What's your normal child learn by seven? You know, we're, we still sometimes at 14, we're, we're dealing with the same things. Okay. It takes longer, but just be patient. Um, but you still have the same expectations um, to a certain extent. Um, like you still need to respect and obey. You can't get away with those kind of things. Kendra goes to visit my mom every Friday afternoon or every other Friday. And if she gets coffee, which is, which is a pretty big deal, they sit and have coffee together. And, uh, and my folks also have a golf cart that they had for my grandpa. And so, so they have driving lessons and my mom is teaching Kendra how to drive the golf cart. And that's, that's a pretty big, that's a pretty big deal for Kendra. Uh, she took me for a drive the other day and I, I had to grab the steering wheel once and tell her to slow down a little bit, but she's, she's getting it. Um, so just treat them, treat them normal. She loves simple, simple pleasures of life. Um, she likes to help do dishes at Maranatha. They, with all the health regulations, you know, they, she really couldn't help wash dishes. Um, 
but she wanted to. And we said, no, you got to let the youth do it. You know? and, oh, she cried. She wanted to help do dishes. Um, yeah, give her dollars. You give her a, you give her a dollar bill. Oh, that, that's huge. She's got dollars. She's saving that. The first one she saved to buy a camera, and then once she had a camera, then she needed to buy an RV. Uh, I said, "Well, you're gonna have to save a while to get a camper," but that was that's what she was saving her dollars for. Um, we've also discovered she likes to be with her age group rather than her mental level, if that makes sense. Don't put her with a bunch of five-year-olds. Uh, put her with like now she likes. Last year she was old enough to be at youth camp, and she's not old enough to function by herself. But we're, we help run the youth camp, and so we're there, and so she wants to stay in the dorm with the girls. And yeah, we did. Uh, but yeah, she, she likes to be, um, she likes to be with her age group. Be authentic. Um, don't be a put on. Genuine interest, one of our friends said. I have a friend with a, with a child with cerebral palsy, and he's quite, quite disabled. And uh, he said, people often come by and, and talk to their son. And, you know, they come and say hi and, and move on. They're being polite, you know. And he said, one day he was playing volleyball and, and this girl came and started talking to his son and she didn't leave. She just stayed there with him. And she kept visiting with him and kept hot. And he said, I got to beat this girl and see who she is. Uh, there was something different about this girl. And so he went over there and it was my sister who, who would – cared for Ben and she knew exactly all about this little boy and, and how the things his needs were and uh, there was a connection there. So I have authentic, authentic interest. Um, love them in the way they like to be loved. It's different than you and I do it. Um, Kendra's birthday is always at Bible school when we're there and that is a highlight. Last year there was no Bible school because of COVID and that was the worst part. She didn't get to have a birthday party at Bible school. And our other kids didn't have birthday parties in here. But I said, you know what? That's a joy Kendra can have. And so we have birthday parties. And, and it's a pretty big deal for her. And the ladies at Bible school love doing it. They, that's one of the highlights of, of Bible school. Give direction to your children. Um, when they see, when you have other children like that, encourage them to just go up and treat them like normal. And my sister used to bring Ben around in his wheelchair. Um, that was huge for our children. It taught our children that this was okay. Um, it was actually before Kendra was born, and, and we learned they learned to accept children with disabilities. Um, but sometimes children don't know, and they gawk or they stare. Um, that's probably kind of normal for all of us. Some of us try to do it discreetly. Um, but just teach your children to um, to be kind. You know, Kendra, it's pretty obvious when you look at Kendra that she's different, and, and we ex we understand that. I have a friend whose son doesn't necessarily look different, but he ha also had significant delays, and and his mom or his dad said sometimes he can get just brushed aside as being dumb. The other friend just, you know, like, well, he just doesn't know. Uh, so be, be considerate. Teach your, teach your children to be considerate. Someone has said that every church needs a special needs child. And uh, and that's, I'll go for that. It teaches it teaches the children in the church empathy. It teaches, teaches the, yeah, we know how to reach out and encourage. Uh, I see Verlin's on here this morning. There's a, there's a little boy in their church. Well, he's not a little boy anymore. He's probably a young man now. But, you know, the, when you go there, you know, I, yeah, he just, He's just the greatest, greatest little guy. And he likes to go out and do the chores, and which means going out and chasing the steers around the steer pen. Or one year he went out and fed all 100 of the new chicks to his dog. Uh, you know, stories like that, whenever I come across those stories, that's just, oh, I always remember those things. And every church needs someone like that. Uh, maybe not someone who feeds chicks to the dog, but you, you get my point. So if, uh, if God has given you a special child, Know that God knows and God cares. Um, it's okay. And uh, and may God give you grace for the child that you have. We were at a special needs retreat one time in, in Pennsylvania. And uh, there, there was a child there. And we, it was a Friday, Friday through Sunday deal. And Friday night we went to bed. And my wife said, 
get me out of here. She said, this is just too weird. I mean, a whole, a whole retreat with special needs, John. She just like, I can't do this. And there was one, there was one girl, she was 27 and she would go from singing to spitting at her parents and slapping them and whatever. And, uh, her parents were in their seventies and they're trying to care for this girl and everybody, everybody could hear this girl. And it was very distracting. And, uh, Sunday afternoon, I, I went up to her dad and I just said, you know, I just want to bless you. Art, I mean, you, you have a, a really tough road here. And he says, oh, he says, we're so blessed. He says, at least our daughter can feed herself. Some people can't feed themselves. And, and that is such a blessing that she can feed herself. Um, God gave him grace to do something that I wasn't called to do. And uh, so if God gives you a special child, he will give you grace for that. Um, and your challenges are real, but so is God's grace. It, it's doable. Take the light in them, and uh, your family will be blessed. So in conclusion, I have a paraphrase. Took a verse and paraphrase it. Then shall Jesus say unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as you have loved one of these special ones, you have loved me. These are children made in God's own image. And uh, one of the first things my wife said after she was born, she said, is she home safe? And I said, yeah, I think she's home safe. And uh, that's what, that's, that's one blessing we have. Um, we, we, we are burdened. We can be burdened for our children. We should be burdened for our children. But we have a daughter that's home safe. And uh, that's a blessing. Turn it back over to you, Sam. Thank you, Tony. Praise the Lord for the testimony of his grace in your life. Um, in regards to this, uh, that was a tremendous encouragement to me. Sometimes we get overwhelmed by the things that we face. Um, I know the difficulties I've faced haven't been a lifelong commitment other than the commitment to follow Christ, but God's grace is sufficient for whatever we have. I would like to open it up to you to share any questions or comments or encouragements or whatever God has laid on your heart? Did I hear Tony say that uh, somebody fed a hundred chicks to a dog? Is that, did I hear that right? Yeah, you heard that right. Yep. Okay. Yep, this little boy has Down syndrome and he went, he just, yeah. He liked his dog, I guess, more than the chicks. Yeah, I, I'm just I wasn't sure that I heard that correctly. Um, and I was concerned about the dog, too. Uh, my, I had a dog who ate baby rabbits. And it basically it killed her. So, And there were only about four. So I don't know if you know how the dog turned out or not. Hopefully the dog survived. Thank you for sharing those uh, tips on how to relate to families with children with special needs. I never know how to approach or, or talk to them. I always want to go talk to the child or talk to the parents or something, but you never know um, if they're going to be accepting of that or if they're going to think it's strange if you see them in Walmart or something and you want to go over and talk to them. Um, thank you for outlining some helpful tips along those lines. That is one thing when we were put, it felt like we, we were put in a new box when um, it was a whole nother world um, that, and before I, I cared for those children, but, but now I'm in that world too. And, and it's a place it's, if you're not there, you can't go there. Mm -hmm. uh, but once you're there, then it, you can, yeah, then you can take advantage of those times. You can go up and say, you know, I have a daughter like that or, uh, there's a young man who works at, well, he's not young, he's 37, works at a lumber yard, and he's been cleaning there since, comes in there like a couple times a week in the morning to, to clean since he was in high school. And he gets a different para every once in a while. He'll get a you know, yeah, someone comes along with him, and, and they always sit around and watch, and I come in, and I always make a big deal about seeing Matt. How are you doing, Matt? And <laughs> he carries on, you know, and and then I always like to show them a picture of Kendra and say, and this is why I like Matt, you know. Mm -hmm. And it gives you a connection to him. They're like, oh, okay, this guy gets it, you know. 
And uh, so, yeah, it's it's a it's a blessing to be in in this box. I had a friend who had an uncle that was Down syndrome, and we had a lot of fun spending time with him. Um, you could spend a whole evening with him, and it was very entertaining. We really enjoyed it. I have the same kind of conversations that your daughter does. I, I usually show up, I drop a bomb, talk to people, and they all wonder what I'm saying when I walk away. We share the same kind of conversational skills. Um, I, too, have a, an immense love for people with Down syndrome. Hold on. My friend Rosie Otto has a brother um, who's extremely Down syndrome. And for some reason, every time I'm near him, I make a point to take him for a walk. And it's really, I see the fear. See, I'm a, I'm a pretty strong person, and he is also. And whenever I took him for a walk, he would always gauge himself to where the house was. And as long as he could see the roof, he was okay. And I had to get him over the hill so he couldn't see the roof, and then he would relax because he was outside of his comfort zone. And that same technique I use for Mennonites. <laughs> but, but I love, you know, this, this guy immensely. And I always have to, I'm, I don't care where I'm at. And it's, I don't think... There's no special thing. You, either you love them or you don't. And I will take, I, I could be in the middle of 15 things and I will just stop and just spend time with them. I just wanted to share that. Thank you very much for your testimony. Well, I'm, you're the one that was here first. I just kind of popped in. I'm actually in Wyoming right now and it's four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Is my volume that bad? No, it's fine. Okay. I just uh, thank you very much for sharing. I really did enjoy it. You speak of knowing their surroundings. That's one thing Kendra does. If we show up at a new place, first thing she has to do is scout it out. She just kind of goes around and figures the whole place out, knows where her boundaries are, and then, she, then she's good. But yeah, a new place, she's going to disappear for a while and kind of scout it all out. I, enjoy, <clears throat> I enjoyed your talk this morning, Tony. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I had a sister who had cerebral palsy and growing up with her, I learned, learned a lot um, having a sister like that and a mother who was just, yeah, very devoted to her. And it's good to hear other people's story. Uh, I did have a question for you. Um, were, you were you ever told that you were like, you're the perfect person to have a child like this or the perfect family for a child like this? Um, and if you were, how, how do you take that comment? You, you view that as encouragement. Um, I know my mom struggled with that some, um, because I guess she felt that she was just like everyone else and she didn't deserve the child any more than anyone else. But just wondered, um, what you thought, how you, how you would feel if someone, um, told you that. I, I think I've. We usually respond, you know, it's, God gives you grace for what you have to do. Um, yeah. I might have even said, people say, oh, you must be a special family if God gave you a special child. No, that's not, we, were, we weren't like wonderful. Um, it did change us, you know, it has made us more empathetic and more whatever, but, but we are not, it's not because we're so good that we get a child like this. Um, nor is it that there's something wrong with us that, that God is punished either. That would be the other other people would have that that perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks again for sharing. I enjoyed it. I might just comment here, knowing Kendra personally <clears throat> and visiting Tony's house is uh, exciting to see Kendra. She is a a person who just loves people and and uh, loves when we come to visit. And I testify to the love she has for a few dollars. 
um, we've, we've used that love a little bit to uh, gain favor with her. Um, I, one question I have for Tony is in reference to how we, uh, the young man that Tony referenced in our congregation, Dwayne, is to do with spiritual things. Um, one of the questions we faced with Dwayne was, um, what about communion? And um, so it's been a few years ago now that we kind of decided that, that Dwayne participating would just mean the world to him. However, he's not going to understand the meaning of it. And so just uh, last Wednesday evening, we had our examination meeting and I met with Dwayne and his mother. And just to sit there with him and asking um, just a simple question, uh, Dwayne, do you love God? And he uh, he can't talk very clearly, not, not near as clearly as, as the Kendra can, but he just acknowledges, yes, yes, he loves God. And and I said, um, Dwayne, I, I'm your friend and I you're my friend. I, I I like that. And he gets the biggest grin on his face. And it just means the world to him to to uh, to participate. And um, so I wonder if you have any comments to in relation to uh, understanding of a, <clears throat> a child with um, Down syndrome and and their love for God and, and where they're at with um church matters and and how you how you relate with that yeah um so i said one of our first thoughts is that she was home safe however that does not mean that we neglect her her spiritual needs i guess um she can understand to a certain extent she can still be taught and but she's going to love god in her own limited understanding um, so she's 14 and, and she's been noticing her friends wearing coverings. And so that's, that's, she'll, she'll notice that, you know, the new, a new friend comes along. Oh, someone's so wearing a covering now, you know? So the other day she, she was saying, well, when she's something, my priori always she's well, she's her, she'll have a bun and, and wear a covering. I'm like, oh, okay. Um, you know, she's not going to understand why we do that. And so I'm, I'm, I don't think we're going to push her into it. But if she wants to, she may. Um, there, there was a boy in, in Ohio my dad met one time went for meetings, and, and he wanted to be baptized. And he wanted to be part of the church. And the biggest thing was he wanted to be able to wash the saints' feet. That was, he was just all thrilled about washing the saints' feet. And, uh, no, I, I commend you for, for including Dwayne. That, you know, um, in his in his understanding, uh, yeah, that's that's just huge. It just that just blesses me. Uh, thanks. I do I do have a friend, so this little girl Destiny I talked about, she's I think she's in her twenties now. Um, but she did she did make a commitment to the Lord. She's baptized, um, she has a higher functioning thought pattern than Kendra does. Um, and so I, I, I do not want to discount what they can understand, um, but just accept them where they are with the understanding that they have. And yeah, take them as far as you can. Well, thanks a lot, Tony, for sharing. I really, uh, really enjoyed uh, hearing your testimony, your family's testimony there, and your encouragement to me. Um, I don't haven't experienced some of the same things, but I'm. Larry spoke earlier. Larry's my brother-in-law, so I I married my wife. Had a sister who with cer cerebral palsy, and she was she was much less uh, able to communicate. Uh, she was in a wheelchair and not able to talk, and so she's not living anymore. But it, she was a blessing to their family as well. And I, yeah, I, I saw a little bit of the inside story with that. So really appreciate your sharing. It was very encouraging, um, even though I'm not quite in the same situation and. But thanks for sharing on how to you know, how to relate to families with um, special children like that. God bless you as you keep on there. Thank you, Tony. Well, I want to thank you all for participating in this. Um, it's been a blessing to have you share that, Tony, uh, your experience and some insights for us. It's very encouraging. That brings us to the close of our time here this morning. Um, 
Tony, would you close us in prayer? Sure. Lord, thank you for the many blessings that you have given to us. And Lord, sometimes in life there are things that are a result of the fall. And we're not part of your intended plan. But you have blessed us and encouraged us even in the midst of these, of these trials. And Lord, I pray today for families that are on this call or those who would here that have children with special needs. Lord, give them grace. Help them to accept the child that you have given them. Um, but not to just accept, but to embrace and to use this, this place, this, this box you've put them in as a way to, to meet other people's needs and to encourage. And um, pray too for these children, Lord, um, and adults. Give them understanding as far as, as they can. Help them to, to love and serve you and to be a blessing in their, in their own churches. And, uh, yeah, we just want to praise you in the midst of these things that we face. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before we go, we have a couple announcements. This afternoon at 3.30 Eastern will be the first Strength to Strength Sisters. Um, Tanya Taylor would be Dean Taylor's wife will be sharing this afternoon at 3.30 and next Saturday of course we'll be meeting here again at the same time 6 o'clock Eastern and we're going to hear on Managers in God's Household the second side of stewardship by Marlon Summers so you're all welcome back here this afternoon tell your wives and sister or sorry you're all welcome back here uh, next Saturday and tell your wives and sisters um, about the meeting this afternoon. And of course that is um, only the sisters are welcome this afternoon for that. And that'll be at three 30. So go with God. God bless you as you serve him today. And uh, may his grace be sufficient. Because iron sharpens iron. So a man sharpens the countenance of his friend.